Hello, welcome back to Fred in the Shed. We've got another little build on the bench. This came in from EngineDIY.com. We've done a couple of their models before. Very impressed with the quality of their kits. If you've never heard of EngineDIY.com, there is a link in the description to their website. You need to go and check their website out, guys, if, if you like doing models, because uh, you can spend a lot of time on there and also an awful lot of money. They've got some amazing steam models there and uh, car engine models, all very, very detailed, uh, normally completely made of metal, very high quality stuff, absolutely amazing website so they've sent this one in this is a sterling engine um scientific kit we're going to try and build in a moment uh company is uh n joma i don't know how you pronounce that it's got the two little turbos there and a the logo which is uh, quite sweet it says from 16 years upwards i think maybe because it needs a little burner a little alcohol burner that probably is the reason why it's so old this is Probably something you might want to do uh, on your own just for the pleasure of building it or maybe you do it as a project with your kids or grandkids something like that anyway let's uh, let's crack into the box quite excited to see uh, what we get inside the other kit we made from enginediy.com that little UFO spinner very very good quality so I'm hoping this is going to be the same got no idea really what we're in for here so this looks like the instructions just a single sheet and hopefully there's some clear illustrations. Oh, here we go. Yeah, a little, little um, voltmeter and that. So it's a, it's a scientific kit, but it should be quite, uh, could be quite nice to build. So normally what you get in these kits, it's all metal construction or mostly metal construction. And they're quite high quality for the money, really. This one is, is what I would say, it's a budget kit on the uh, website. It's not, uh, it's not too much money. Right, I've got lots of little packets to undo here, so I'll probably do this off camera. Got a nice big packet here. It looks like it's got the small electrical generator in it, which has got a LED soldered over two of the terminals. So it comes with a little, little Phillips screwdriver. So that's, that's quite nice. And, oh, okay, I can see a couple of roller bearings in there. Again, other than the screwdriver, of course. I mean, it's all metal, very little plastic. A nice polished aluminium base. What else we got? A little, vo oh, a little um, LED. It's like a little voltage regulator. That's quite nice. There, there were quite a bit on its own. Some rubber feet. And uh, okay, yes, that's, that's the USB there. We've got a USB uh, port. I wonder if this would, wouldn't this be great if this could charge a phone? I don't think it'll have enough ampage. What I'm going to do is. I'm going to build this in time lapse, speed it up, and as I mentioned before, if you want to slow it down, then just um, go down to that little uh, options cog, the little um, settings cog in the YouTube there, and then you can select the, the, the speed. If you turn it down to 0.25, that will slow it all down, probably pretty much to real time if you like. Um, Time-wise to build this, I don't know. It's going to be so difficult for me because I'm obviously filming at the same time, probably about an hour, I would say. And uh, But it, it is the building with these kits. I mean, someone said before, a long time ago, he said, well, what's the point? What, what are you going to do with it? That's not the point. The, the pleasure in these kits, really, is the construction. It, it, it's quite, I find it generally quite relaxing as long as everything goes together and nothing cross threads. I just find it quite relaxing to do. And of course, at the end of it, you have a working model that you can show people. And it's quite nice, uh, quite nice to own. Anyway, that's all the components then on the, on the bench. I'm going to speed it up now. Join me at the end when uh, hopefully we get it working.
And there you go, that's the engine built. It took me 35 minutes, which was quicker than I thought. I can say there was no issues or problems. Only one bolt was a little bit tight, that one just under there. That was just very, very slightly tight to bolt it. Everything else has gone in really, really nice. And once again, it's a lovely piece of, um, piece of work, isn't it? When you look at this, very little plastic on the model at all. And yeah, it looks really, really nice. It's quite like a little display piece, really. As far as spare parts go, the tools, well, the tools they supplied were absolutely okay. It appears that you get piston rubbers because as there's no lubrication in the pistons, I imagine these are going to wear quite quickly. So you do get a few spare rubber parts, um, but as, as, as the previous models, there's no spare nuts or bolts, so you have to be very careful that you don't lose one on the floor, otherwise you're going to be quite unhappy. I wish they'd supply, you know, just a couple, maybe an extra screw here and there, especially as that screw is a little bit tight, maybe it was the thread on the screw, an extra screw, an extra bolt, one of these little grub screws, I know it adds to the cost, but I wouldn't mind spending an extra 50 pence or a pound to have a little packet of spares. Um, Walesco were really good when you do a Walesco model, they always get you a little packet of spare parts. Anyway, that's all of that built. This is the alcohol burner, has a little magnet here to secure that and it's going to fit under there. So like I say, I'm going to use isopole alcohol for this because I want it to burn very, very clean otherwise this, this will get quite sooty. But already, just freewheeling it, you can feel there's, um, there's compression. So of course the way this works is this is going to be the hot cylinder, this is going to be the cold cylinder. This will heat up the air in the cylinder here. Hopefully this will expand, push the piston forward, uh, then there'll be a vacuum caused because these are interconnected. So there'll be a vacuum caused in the cold cylinder that will pull this piston this way. And it's kind of like a push and pull scenario, hot and cold cylinders. And we should get some uh, spin on it. What I'll do is I, I, won't put the, I won't put the drive belt on it straight away. Let's get it working. Okay, we'll just tuck that wire out of the way. We're ready to start this uh, running. Now, I've got a couple of these engines upstairs, and what is quite surprising is how fast these will run. The RPMs on these are quite quick. You do get little rubber caps here that I didn't show you. That's just to make sure the con rods don't fly off the flywheel. Um, it says it starts anti-clockwise, so... Okay, wish me luck. Here we go. Obviously, you've got to be a bit careful whilst using this. This is a naked flame, obviously, and also these uh, glass components are going to get very hot. The magnet holds it in place, which is um, quite good. Let's try now. There she goes. Picking up speed. Isn't that nice? It's not running at silly speed either. It's also nice you can see the piston going up and down inside the glass cylinder there. That's really nice. Right, I'm going to try and blow it out. Right, I've blown, let's slow down and then we'll connect up the electrical gubbins. We get the generator going and see what voltage it kicks out. Okay, here we go for round two. That 
that uh, heat up a little bit. Right, we hit a little problem. I couldn't get it to start. And I've noticed that the when it's hot, the piston has become loose on the con rod there. So maybe I didn't tighten it properly or maybe be an idea just drop a little bit of super glue on the thread. So I need to take the glass piston bore housing off. Now what I'm gonna do, you can see um, safety first because obviously this, this glass has been heated now so it's gonna be tempered. Uh, I'm a little bit worried about this shattering basically in my hands, so I'm going to do it very carefully now with gloves. You don't get any spare glass either, so uh, yeah, it is a bit tight. Right, took a bit of effort to get it moving. Just got to be very careful with glass, obviously. So, okay, it feels tight, but when it's got really, really hot, it started, it started to move. So, I'm uh, going to try and see if we can just very carefully tighten it up a little bit, take it off the flywheel. Like I say, it might be an idea when you if you make this just to put a little tiny bit of super glue on the threads if they're going to work loose. Okay, so I've super tightened that now. Right, let me put it back together and then we can see if it runs. There we go, we're running again. Well, oh, it's moving about. Right, going to uh, connect up the power pulley now. Just going to stop it. Hopefully it's got enough torque to turn the little motor. Right, let's see how we get on. Lights flashing. Running a little bit slower. Let me kill the lights and then we might be able to see the voltage. Slight loose connection I think at the moment. We've got a slight loose connection. There we go. Working 2.4 volts. Zoom in a little bit. It's very hard to see, isn't it, because of the uh, because of the flame. Oh, it's gone out again. So we had 2.4 volts there. 2.4. I can just shield the flame without. See that? It's flashing. Two point four seven. There we go. I think it's just slightly losing voltage. 2.5. Let's plug in the uh, little that will light and if it'll run. So yeah, I think we've got a little short on this wire. Uh, 
And there we go. So yeah, we're only getting two and a half volts out of it. Um, I have a feeling it may have may have been um, supposed to run at five volts. I think that's just the module actually. I just don't think there's enough quite enough voltage to power the module. And the lights back on. But there we go, it's running. I mean, the little LED's working. Yeah, there we go, it's really running now. Starting to run out of fuel. But running much faster without the little generator there. Yeah, really nice. Let me shut this. Switch it off and then we just let it slow down naturally. So yeah, really nice kit. Thank you to EngineDIY.com for sending this in. Very nicely made, just as a demonstration piece. It's uh, very nice with its chromium finish. And quite educational. Whether you um, can get the LED to run, I, I don't know. But on its own, yeah, really, really nice actually. As always, I would like to say thank you for your view time. I do appreciate it. I'm a small channel, don't get that many views per video. As always, the thumbs up from me, Fred in the Shed. If you get a second before you go, you can just hit me a thumbs up down below. I would really appreciate that. But as always, stay tuned. More radio stuff coming up and other stuff like this, things that you probably wouldn't uh, expect. Anyway, look after each other, stay safe, catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys.